Thanks. This is me, warm, fun, and interactive. <laughs> so that guy, he was a visionary, Albert Einstein. And I mean, what is a visionary? I was thinking about it, listening to all the amazing visionaries and people that have been up here speaking before me. I think it's two key things. One is, you see the world differently. He was a genius. He was crazy. But he saw the world differently and had the tenacity and the ability to pursue it. But he was also a dreamer. And, and a, a musician, and someone who allowed himself to experiment mentally with ideas that were, that were way out on the edge. And one of his experiments, mental experiments, is curious to me, and that was he said, what if we could put a human being in a little box with no windows, air, but no windows, and you set that box here on the ground, how would that person know where they were? Well, they would know that they are on Earth because of the gravity of the Earth pulling them down. But what if you took that same box and you put it way out away from the planets, out away from the stars, and you pushed on the bottom of the box with that acceleration that was giving the same force, the person inside the box would feel exactly the same. And that simple little daydream of Einstein's was enough to show him that somehow gravity and acceleration are the same thing. It helped him with his math. It helped him be celebrated the way he has been for all the years since. I mean, he died two years before Sputnik. Imagine what he would think now of the fact that I've been that guy in that little box where the force of acceleration and the force of gravity were perfectly balanced so I could be weightless in space. And above our heads right now, there are people on board the International Space Station circumnavigating the Earth. That's so impossible to circumnavigate our planet. I mean, the first person ever do it was only 500 years ago. That's like, what is that, 18 generations. 18 cycles of us was the first time any of us circumnavigated with Magellan in 1519. And they took the best of the technology they could, and they could just barely do it. Most of them died. They lost four out of five ships, but they circumnavigated the world. But now, with the continuous, relentless, uh, pursuit of mental activity. We have people flying in airplanes to all corners of the world effortlessly all the time. And there are three of us, uh, Randy and Sergey and Paolo, who are up on the space station right now, going around the world every 92 minutes, 16 times a day. For me, the most magical, I had a chance to do that three times. The most magical part of that experience is the day I got dressed in a little well, big set of clothes that weigh more than I did that was essentially a one-person spaceship so that I could then cut myself off from everybody else, open up the hatch, grab on with both hands, and pull myself out into the universe. And to see the world this way with your naked eyes, to have a glimpse of the future of where we are going, our, our continuous, relentless, pursuit of all of the genius amongst us to enable us to do things we've only imagined in the past, to give ourselves an accurate perception of the world. And what do you see from out there? Oddly enough, you can see, for the first time, I think, you can see the enormity of time. You can see the scars on the earth. If you see the whole world in, in 90 minutes, you see the scars and the coastlines and the atrocities that our world has been through, and you start to get a sense of what four and a half billion means in years. You also see the present. You can see all the little specks of light of where we have settled around the world in all the good spots. You can see the pollution that we create, the, the smears that are Beijing and Los Angeles and Mexico City. You see the stupid mistakes we're making, where we've wiped out the entire Aral Sea in one generation, the fourth biggest sea on Earth. But maybe you can also start to look forwards a little bit from that rare vantage point, start to see the future just a little bit about where we're going and what we ought to be doing next. Because never in history have we fed as many of ourselves as we have today. Our technology, riding on the wave of essentially fossil fuels in the Industrial Revolution, has brought us to a level of, of success of quality of life we've never experienced before. There are more of us with an education 
that has ever happened in history. More people, we've taken uh, world literacy from 50% to 80% in the last 25 years. We've eliminated entire childhood diseases. We all have a greater expectation of law. It's imperfect. It's not even around the world, but it's also pretty amazing. But we still have such significant problems that face us that we need to somehow be able to address. And we need Einsteins. We need people who are visionaries. And I just want to finish by the fact that I have a granddaughter now, and so I'm seeing the world slightly through her eyes. And I'm watching how she is learning about the world, and it's what Deepak spoke about a little, it's what, what Sir Ken was talking about, and that is every single one of us, let me grab this, every single one of us knows what a chair does. Everybody here knows what a chair does, and nobody ever told you what a chair does. When you were my granddaughter's age, you looked around, before you could talk, and you watched a chair for a while and you said, okay, got it, that's what chairs do. And you also learned what puppies do and what moms do and what dads do. And we learned to walk and to explore a year before we learned to talk. We've already pretty much decided what everything does before we can even speak. And we talk about STEM in schools for 10-year-olds, that's way too late. They have already learned what everything does. And everything you ever decided not to do in life is probably because you looked around and said, that's something that people like me don't do. To me, everything I've listened to today has just been reaffirming in my mind the absolute necessity to put examples in front of our children that allow them to see the world differently, to give them an opportunity to imagine themselves as somebody different. We need to not squander the genius that is all around us. We need to take advantage of this current wave to face all of the problems everybody's been talking about in a way we've never been able to before. To me, that is the fundamental reason to be celebrating Einstein. Thanks.